Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, like-minded friends, thank you very much indeed for inviting me in, uh, to, to this very important summit. <coughs> thank you, Daphne, for your uh, efforts to, to keep me here. Okay. And you know, my topic is, uh, uh, from my point of view, is very timely. Because uh, we all know very well that political will is a very ephemeral question. What does it mean, political will? Of course, sometimes we are using the word politicians. I don't like this word, absolutely. I am never was politician. Never. I was medical doctor. I am historian. I, I am active citizen, like Mariano uh, presented active citizenship. I am European citizen, and it's my obligation to be active, to be together, and of course to create some, you know, uh, critical mass of opinions and to say in which direction we all should go. And but I don't like what politicians. So for me, it's, it means nothing absolutely. But uh, look, how it was important to to face big and dramatic challenge. COVID pandemic, because it really helped us to understand what does it mean to mobilize political will, mobilize. Let me go now step by step explaining what does it mean, because the topic is, is exactly what have we learned from the pandemic. And my big thank to the pandemic because we learned very much despite of, of despite of pain despite of losses despite despite of of uh, you know a lot of premature deaths but let's start with first life you know all very well simple word universal universal health coverage Okay? From epidemiological point of view, from medical point of view, we know very well. But from political point of view, this word universal health coverage is a really now a big tool in our hands. As you know, because universal health coverage and health security are two uh, intervening goals, and universal health coverage is indeed now more than ever before is important. And of course, you know that now we are facing, or just, just in, in a previous session, we all discussed about climate change. We all discussed it now armed conflicts and two, three wars in, 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 in our continent. Frankly speaking, European, WHO European regions covers 53 countries, and Israel is one of the WHO regional countries, as you know. Of course, Palestine is, uh, if, in the future, if should be two-state solution, maybe Palestine also will be in European uh, region. But now we have Ukrainian war, we have uh, Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, and we have Gaza. Three terrible, terrible consequences. Of course, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, of, of uh, because of, because of, of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Flood, droughts, and so on. And of course, pandemic occurred once again. In 2019, world leaders endorsed the most ambitious and comprehensive political declaration on health in history at the United Nations High Level Meeting on Universal Health Coverage. In 2019, you know, uh, committing for all people to have access to quality essential health services and quality, safe, effective, affordable, and essential medicines, vaccines, diagnostics, and, and health technology without experiencing financial hardship and without discrimination by 2030. Financial hardship is a political one question. Of course, it's very big determinants when we are speaking about health determinants. Of course, also, we, we, we proclaim that we need to to achieve those goals in 2030. Now we have 2023. We have only seven years. Who is responsible to achieve those final goals uh, enshrined in Universal Health uh, Coverage Declaration? Politicians. 
politicians, yes? It means that political will now play a very important game implementing promises. And of course, building on 2019 political commitment to universal health coverage, world leaders have a unique opportunity to reinvigorate progress towards delivering health for all if they, they take urgent actions for implementation and accountability. And you know, uh, in September, you, at nation le uh, United Nations level, we, ha we had three excellent summits. First time in the history of United Nations, three summits about, uh, 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 about um, uh, crisis preparedness and response, about universal health coverage, and about TB. Now, let's see what, uh, what can we do by making sustainable investments in health sectors, including investment into immunization agendas, prioritizing a primary health care approach, properly resourcing and protecting health and care work, uh, workers, and working with communities, civil society, and private sector, leaders can address the bottlenecks that are hampering progress towards universal health coverage and healthy security goals, while also promoting equity, gender equality, accountability, human rights, and economic prosperity. All those topics are political. We, our medical society knows very well, you know, but what about politics? Do they know it and do, do they ready to implement this? Means we are speaking about political will. Let me go to the next old slide. You know very well, it's 1974. It's Mark Lalonde report in Canadian, uh, in member of Canadian government at the time. And such report shows very clearly that you know that uh, uh, health field concept b uh, covers human biology, environment, lifestyle, and healthcare organization. Now we are speaking about, about environment, the climate change is environment, yes? Uh, uh, human biology, we know very well it's our body, yes? And of course, all issues were analyzed and, and main outcome was that when we identify the present main causes of sickness and death in Canada, we, will, uh, we, we find that they are rooted in the other three elements of the concept, human biology, environment, and lifestyle. Human bi biology is constant. It's not about political will. But environmental and life, lifestyle component directly uh, it depends on political will. Because climate change also is about political will. How can we tackle you know, our promises to reduce carbon emission? It's political will. How can we you know, change lifestyle? It's also political will. And of course, regardless of progress, is that call, the call that prevention is better than QA in 2022 is as a high on political agenda, and it was in, in 1974. How many money we are investing in prevention in every country? I know statistics, you know, because I was commissioner. Not more than 3% of, 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 of all investment. Not more. As is the best country to invest. Four, uh, three, four percent of, 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 of all investments into prevention. But we know slogan, prevention is better than QA. Who is against? No one. But when we are asking politicians, are you ready to put such slogan into your financial uh, plan and show how many money you are putting into prevention? This slogan is empty. Okay. Next one. We know very well those cardinal uh, six approaches. Health in all policies approach. Uh, prevention is better than QE approach. Holistic approach. One health concept. One health concept covering animal health, plant health, oral, uh, 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 sorry, uh, human health, and and, uh, and, uh, and 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 knowing that it is one health now as, as never can help us address many challenges around. It's holistic approach. Patient-centered, uh, patient-centered integrated care approach, community-based approach, and leaving no one behind approach. Tell me, those approaches are covered by science, by evidence. No, no one is against. 
But what is about political will to introduce those approaches into reality, into all decisions? That is a question. Let's go. But because we are uh, speaking about, about immunization, about life course immunization, you know, I, it's my obligation to, to remind you a little bit about WHO. <laughs> because European program of work, you know, it was adopted uh, in, in, in two years ago. And European Immunization Agenda 2030 is a main coordinate stone in our WHO program. Immunization is one of the best buys in, in global health, a strong foundation of primary health care system, and an indisputable human right. It plays a crucial role in achieving either directly or indirectly 14 of 17 sustainable development goals. When we're speaking about immunization, we keep in mind how many sustainable development goals should be covered by, by, by these tools. Of course, uh, uh, European Immunization Agenda 2030 provides a vision and, uh, and framework for actions by WHO, policymakers, national immunization programs, professional associations, civil society, community-based organizations, and other immunization stakeholders for the next decades in the region. Of course, you know, uh, European Immunization Agenda, uh, Agenda 2030 outlines the strategic pivots re uh, required to achieve its vision and, co it, and considers key contextual challenges to be addressed, such as the complexities of sustaining high and uh, equitable coverage, specific challenges faced by, by middle income countries in the region, and gaps in immunization over the past years that could fuel future outbreaks. And immunization, uh, the European Immunization Agenda 2030 was developed at the request of member states through a truly bottom-up consultative and iterative process with the various regional stakeholders. They request us to, to provide, but then when we are speaking with member states in our regional conferences, you see that, that appetite to implement European Immunization Agenda, now on the ground is, sorry to say, not so big. Of course, you know that immunization agenda, the vision uh, is, uh, is uh, created on a world where everyone, everywhere, at every age, fully benefits from vaccines for good health and well-being. It's a concept. Absolutely. And of course, three impact goals. First, reduce mortality and morbidity caused by disease prevent preventable through vaccination. Second, increase equitable access to new and existing vaccines for everyone regardless of age, identity, and geographic location. And third, strengthen primary health care and th thereby contribute to achieving universal health coverage and sustainable development. And European, at European Union, we also should speak about, because now, now I am going from WHO to, to, the, to EU. EU actions to strengthen cooperation against vaccine preventable disease were presented yesterday. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, am, uh, I, I only can touch some, 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 some points. In 2018, at, that, at that time I was in the European Commission in 2018. The European Commission uh, communication and European Union Council recommendation on strengthening cooperation against vaccine preventable diseases led to a range of EU actions outlined in the Commission implementation roadmap focused on strengthening vac vaccination policies and programs following declines in vaccination coverage and new disease outbreaks in some European countries. A key aim of the policy initiative was to strengthen vaccination uptake. In 2018, it was a, 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 a such very important goal. The inherit, inherently cross-border character of um, the vaccine preventable, preventable diseases alo along the, 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 the Free, free movement of people within the EU single market means that adult immunization sits squarely within the remit of EU action as defined by Article 168 of, of Treaty on the Functioning of the EU. 
And of course, you know, important actions that resulted from the communication and council recommendations that EU joint action on vaccination, the aim of which was to foster a sustainable cooperation between European countries and implement best practices in national vaccine policy in order to fight vaccine preventable disease and improve population health. Please keep in mind, sustainable cooperation. Two words, sustainable cooperation. You know, commission always is ready to help, but political will is coming from member states. Do member states have idea to develop their own sustainable cooperation? Please take me examples. Sustainable. It means that every month or uh, every in, in one and a quarter, member states, ministers are gathering, they are doing their, you know, and they are cooperating and in, 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 in developing their cooperative tools. I am a little bit, uh, uh, I, am providing, I am providing a little bit irony, but please keep in mind sustainability. And of course, creation of European Vaccine Informal Information Portal and coalition for vaccination composed of healthcare professionals and students' associations. And of course, in, in, in addition, the European Union has provided funding for a state of vaccine confidence in the EU reports developed by the Vaccine Confident, Confidence Project. A voluntary collaboration between national immunization technical groups was also initiated by the European Center of Disease Prevention and Control with the aim to developing a system for the exchange of existing and new scientific evidence and the joint generation of up-to-date up scientific evidence. And it was in 2019. But when pandemic came, we all saw that Europe is not ready to address those issues. Why? Why? The question for all of us. Uh, of course, of course, <clears throat> uh, but when, <clears throat> then COVID-19 pandemic subsequently triggered new forms of European cooperation, in particular EU procurement on, of, of vaccines as part of the EU, EU vaccine strategy, as well as the creation of the European Health Emergency Response Authority. From the beginning, it was <coughs> idea to have <coughs> strong agency, health uh, emergency response authority agency. Now is you know much weaker. Now it's only directorate within the European Commission. It's not uh, agency which has its own capacities. We need. To, to think about. And of course, in December 2022, the Council of the EU adopted conclusions on vaccinations as one of the most effective tools for, for preventing disease and improving public health. From those conclusions to practical implementation, I see long, long way. And of course, as you know, <coughs> uh, 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 main objectives of the European Union vaccine strategy were ensuring the quality, safety, and efficacy of vaccines, securing timely access to vaccines for member states and their population while leading the global solidarity effort, and ensuring equitable and affordable access for all in the EU as early as possible. And here, let me draw attention on one very important issue <coughs> going a little bit out of, 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 of topic. A value-based healthcare approach, also not only to vaccination, but, but value-based healthcare approach is a very important one. The concept of value-based healthcare was gained prominence within European uh, Europe during the past decade a countries, as countries have sought to improve the e efficiency and effectiveness of their healthcare system against a backdrop of constrained public finances. Constrained public finan finances, uh, you know, following us minimum 10 years from 2008 financial crisis till now, we see constraints when we are speaking about public, public uh, financial capacities. Uh, in 2019, European Commission expert panel on effective ways on investing in health developed and proposed a broader, more inclusive definition, which captures the broad range of objectives that underpin the design and functioning of European health systems. 
The expert report identified four value pillars within the value-based health care approach. Four. First, appropriate care to achieve patients' personal goods, called personal value. Second, achievement of best possible outcomes with availability resources, technical value. Third, equitable resource distribution across all patients' groups, allocative value. And fourth, contribution of health care to social participation and connectedness, societal value. Those four values should be discussed at the level of ministers of finance, not of ministers of health. Council of ministers of finance should discuss those issues every time. If you are speaking about possibilities to deliver leaving no one behind and all those approaches on the ground. And what about those discussions? Do you hear something? Do you hear something? Where is the word value-based health care? But it is because it is about economy, about economy of, of health, about sector which is so important to, to, to keep European Union strong on, on the uh, around the guiding, guiding principles within this approach include access, equity, quality, and efficiency. Now I, I am trying uh, to, to go a little bit to the next topic because, as you know, uh, some very initiative uh, uh, scientists uh, leading with Professor Walter Ricciardi decided to establish mission board on vaccination. Because as now you know that mission, mission driving initiatives, now we have five mission driving initiatives. We have Europe is beating cancer. We have uh, from farm to fork. We have healthy oceans, healthy seas. We have smart cities. And fifth one is, uh, I don't remember which is farm mission driving initiative. And now is idea to develop new one mission driving initiative on vaccination in Europe. Why? Because reality shows that we need to see how can we achieve progress in some uh, The work of mission board on, on vaccine in Europe is informed by its mission temple, uh, which seeks to make sense of the complex environment in which and through which decision making the vaccination occurs. At the base of the temple is research and understanding, which underpins all mission board vaccine initiative activities. The four pillars of the temple reflect key challenges, as well as opportunities for the strengthening European immunization system, data and evidence for decision making, beliefs, perceptions, and vaccine confidence, uh, citizens' access to vaccines, convergence and alignment, the pediment of the temple captures the fundamental principle of equity, which can be simply defined as a principle of fairness, not only from, uh, from a house, but also an, an economic and social perspective also. Equity is at the heart of the sustainable development agenda and including the objective of universal health coverage. And please look at this, this temple. Equity and independent and, uh, and ground is research and understanding and four pillars. Uh, we are now continuing to develop our common consensus paper. And uh, as you know, uh, uh, we can prepare it in, in, in at the end of this, this year. And then now we have only draft. And then we will disseminate it and once again trigger issues debating uh, debating problems with vaccine in mission mission driving vaccine initiatives. We can do it. I am I am one of the members of this of this. Okay, let's go to the next topic. The mission uh, uh, board. Recommendations contained in this draft report are also synergetic with several of the core principles of European Immunization Agenda 2030. In particular, that the implementation of, of European Immunization Agenda should be data-enabled, 
to inform evidence-based decision-making, monitor progress, and foster transparency and accountability, equity-based, in particular to reach unvaccinated and under-vaccinated populations, innovation research-based to improve techniques to deliver vaccines and innovate innovative ways of communicating about vaccines, and partnership-based, strengthen collaboration across the health sector and other sectors, and of course with with active citizens, uh, citizenship networks. Alongside the thematic chapters and associated recommendations, a number of cross-cutting themes also emerge and which should be emphasized here. First, life course approach. It is for you, for your alliance very important a life course approach to immunization is strategic priority of European Immunization Agenda 2030. Seven years we need, to be, we will have to implement <laughs> life course approach. It requires a recognition that vaccination is an important health intervention with benefits to people at all stages, all life, including children, adolescents, and adults. Vaccination strategies and programs should embed life course immunization as a core principle. This in turn requires that national immunization technical advisory groups, which play a key role in the decision-making process of vaccination, are equipped with the appropriate expertise vaccination across the life course. And in line with this approach, uh, as recommended in our draft, the draft calls for development a core calendar for adults immunization in European countries, as just Professor Sonis mentioned yesterday about possibilities to have core calendar. Of course, second, sustainable, uh, sustainable immunization financing. This, this report uh, uh, emphasizes addressing the challenges and sizing the opportunities identifying by our board will require additional resources, financial, human, and technical. To achieve this, sustainable in investment to strengthen immunization system across Europe is needed. That includes investing in, in enhanced data collection and evidence generation to enable new and innovative policies that can strengthen vaccine confidence, to broaden the availability and, and access of vaccines, and to strengthen vaccination equity. While decisions on immuniza immunization financing are taken at national level, we are recommended also to call for action at EU level to monitor and promote immunization spending by EU member states' governments. It would be our mission, uh, main message to member states' governments. And of course, intersectoral collaboration. The principle of, of collaboration across sectors is at the heart of mission approach and is especially vital in the uh, case of vaccination. Yes, and you can, you can, of course, you can find in our draft those, those uh, 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 main recommendations as you need five chapters. But I think we will discuss it in, in the future when our draft will be uh, adopted and be, be, be a final document. And let's, now let's go to the very important next part of my, uh, my topic. As you know, in this book, we discussed issues about European Health Union. And one of our authors, uh, Thibaut Derwelle, he analyzed a uh, situation with, uh, with, you know, with uh, Europe proposed European uh, crisis response preparedness and surveillance uh, uh, pillar. And he analyzed all, you know, picture of, of today's situation in and his outcomes, as you see, and this is my, my slide, if, if he concluded that yes, yes, now we see some, some three paradigms, para, pa, paradigm changes crystallized by the pandemic, which created optimal conditions to change how national governments look at preparedness. First, the joint procurement mechanism is a policy instrument that has been neglect, neglected in the past. Arguably, a strategy, a strategy based on joint purchase could be of service to member states' preparedness rather than being mostly instrumental in times of crisis. 
This is the role of the, that Hera could, uh, could fill. Second, scientific agencies have been endowed with more capacity to assist member states since, since the pandemic. The due of EMA and ECDC offers um, solid guarantees of credible and dependent scientific expertise, which would be an asset in legitimizing shared competencies in matters of preparedness. Please keep in mind, it would be asset if, if I then will speak about shared competencies. And finally, the most important paradigm change is that member states took stock of their interdependence in facing the pandemic. The lesson from the pandemic needs to be take, taken further. Not only do we know that Europe was ill-prepared for COVID-19, but we also know that lessons from the previous crisis were rapidly forgotten. Do not allow it to forget. Do not allow us. And it's, uh, of course, you know that this, this objective is within European reach, especially at the EU and at member states level, uh, investing in the production chain of, 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 um, of preparedness instruments and also to think about shared competences. We discussed a little bit about legal basis on which we are all uh, obliged to work. Health in the European policy, here you can see all legal points which are very important to all of us. Of course, EU member states are committed to, to health via the constitution of World Health Organization, European treaties, European Charter for Fundamental Rights, and Sustainable Development Goals. The list of main legal provisions is as follows. Article 168, of the Treaty on the Functioning of the EU states that a high level of human health protection shall be ensured in the definition and implementation of all union policies and activities. This article is in the Treaty on the Functioning of the EU, but not in the Treaty of the European Union, not in the basic treaty. It's only about function. And please keep in mind, I will tell you what does it mean. Of course, I do not repeat Charter of Fundamental Rights, uh, especially, especially uh, Article 35, which states that everyone has the right of access to preventive health care and the right to benefit from medical treatment under the conditions established by national laws and practices. By national laws and practices. But you know the Charter of Fundamental Rights is only additional charter to the main treaties. And no, not all EU countries ratified such ch charter. You know that. It means that it is like to say additional. 